Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today's question is leak code 286, walls and gates. So you're given an M by N grid, rooms initialized with these three possible values. Minus one indicates a wall, zero a gate, and then INF, which indicates an integer of value two to the power of 31 minus one. And you may assume that the distance to a gate is less than that value. So fill each empty room with the distance to its nearest gate. If it's impossible to reach a gate, it should be filled with infinity. So here in the examples, we are just populating this grid array with the values to the nearest gate. So as you can see in this grid here, in this cell, one is pointing to the nearest gate, two is pointing to the gate at the bottom, and three is also pointing to the gate at the bottom. And then all other positions within this grid are pointing to the other gate. So the question asks us to find the distance to its nearest gate. Now, nearest meaning the shortest path to a gate. So we'll be using breadth first search in order to solve this problem. Now with breadth first search, we'll have a queue. What is going to go inside this queue? The positions of these gates are going to go inside the queue. So we could actually add the values to the queue before initializing the breadth first search. So we could loop through this grid, find the positions of these gates and add them into queue. So this is what our queue would initially look like. Now the difficult part about this with using breadth first search is usually with breadth search, you're using it on some sort of binary tree. But in this case, we've got a grid and we need to check all of the possible directions. So here we have four possible directions, right? We have up, right, down, and left. So we need to check all those directions. Now, a really good way of doing this is to store the positions of all potential directions in a variable. So we'll have a directions variable. So directions, which is going to equal an array and the array is gonna store each position or each possible direction that the cell can move to. Okay, great, so we've got all the positions that we can move to. However, there's an issue here. So this one's out of bound. This one's out of bound. This one is out of bound because it's pointing to a wall. We can't go that direction. This is the only position or the only direction that we can move to. So at this point, so we need some kind of is bound logic within our algorithm. Now, when we get to this next position, when we, when we look at this cell, all we're going to do is add the previous cell so the value in here, so initially it'll be at zero. We're just gonna add one to that. Then we're gonna push the position of this cell into the queue. And I've just realized that this should be the other way around. So into the queue goes that value, so two and zero. So that's this one here. And then we check all potential directions. Three are out of bound. One is available. So we just add one on to the previous cell. So that'll be two. And then we add this position into the queue and we repeat the process. And it'll be the same for this gate. So we'll be left with something like this. So three, two, one, two, three, four, and one. These will all be pointing to this gate. And then these in the left side will all be pointing to the gate below. So that's the general idea of the solution that we're going to be implementing. Um, time complexity for this one is going to be OM times N, because in worst case scenario, say we had a gate, this gate, for example, and this was the only gate within this grid. There were no walls, there were just empty spaces everywhere else. In worst case scenario, we're gonna have the time complexity of OM times N, because we're gonna have to go through and visit each cell within this grid. And then space complexity is also going to be the same. So to start off this code, let's write out a constant so a wall is equal to minus one gate is equal to zero empty is equal to this value we're going to have a q and we're going to have directions Then we need to loop through the grid and find all positions where there is a gate. So if rooms at IJ is equal to gate, we push into Q the position of that gate. So we populated the queue with all the positions of the gate. So we've carried out the first section of the breakfast search and then we can 
start the breath research. So grab the current value, which is q.shift, get current x, which is going to equal current at zero, and do the same for y. Then we need to loop through the directions because remember we need to go through every direction from the current position. So we're going to loop through D of directions. We're going to get the next X and next Y. So next X will be equal to the current X plus D at zero. So we're using the Dura rate to work out its next position. And we also need to do the same for the Y. So current Y plus D1. We need to check if it's inbound. So if next x is less than zero or next x is greater than rooms.length minus one or next y is less than zero. Next y is greater than or e. Actually, no, we'll do greater than rooms zero dot length minus one or rooms at next x, next y, so the next position does not equal empty. If any of those are true, then we can just continue. Now we need to populate the grid at position next x, next y with a value. And that is going to be the value at current x, current y plus one. And then we just need to push on to Q the next position so that we can carry this out on all possible positions within this grid. Okay, and that is it for this question. Let's run it and see if it's worked. Okay, it's been accepted. Let's submit it. And there you have it.